so people in this video we want to look at acquired ptosis right in, uh, where are we so we are looking at ptosis which is nothing but abnormal drooping of the ab uh, upper eyelid right only of the upper eyelid they are talking about and um, what is it it is abnormal drooping of the upper eyelid and normally it covers 2 mm of the cornea uh, but if it covers more than that it is called ptosis clinically uh, clinical etiological types we saw congenital we saw and acquired we have to see now in congenital what did we see we saw that <coughs> they are blaming this uh, the weakness of the levator palpebrae superioris muscle okay the lps muscle only they are blaming and uh, here what will be there the drooping of the eyelid lid crease will be diminished or absent the lid lag on down gaze even in that the totic lid will be higher than normal lps function is not proper we also looked at uh, the associated features congenital ptosis can be associated with nothing that time it is called a simple ptosis where there is uh, it is not associated with any other feature but it can be associated with blep wait we missed one thing before that congenital ptosis which can be associated with weakness of superior rectus muscle right so it can be associated with the uh, weakness of superior rectus muscle so simple is there and then associated with superior rectus muscle and then this one this is blepharoophimosis this is uh, congenital ptosis in which there is underdeveloped eyelids there is telecanthus the distance is more between the uh, corners of the inner corners of the eyelid right and there can be epicanthus inverses so this is that syndrome where the congenital ptosis is associated with many other things right this is called as blepharoophimosis syndrome okay then you have the congenital synkinetic ptosis or marcus gun jaw winking ptosis that is this one where the <clears throat> where the ptosis the ptosis lid the totic lid gets retracted when the person moves the jaw okay this is uh, when uh, because the stimulation happens of the pterygoid muscle at that point there is elevation so retraction of the totic lid so this is what we saw in congenital ptosis now we have to look at acquired ptosis so acquired ptosis can be neurogenic myogenic aponeurotic or mechanical so there can be four causes remember this person was fine before now he is not fine this is acquired right so acquired ptosis can be neurogenic neurogenic means what because of third nerve palsy horner syndrome ophthalmoplegic migraine multiple sclerosis they are giving only these uh, four things under neurogenic third nerve palsy you have third nerve, third nerve palsy you have seen in this uh, squint remember the third nerve that is the oculomotor nerve supplies all these muscles right inferior rectus superior rectus inferior oblique medial rectus all these are sub, uh, supplied by what the third nerve that is the oculomotor nerve so if all these nerves are gone what will happen there can be paralytic squint you have seen this one where the eye is down and out this one paralytic squint eye is down and out with ptosis so you can see ptosis also here can you are you able to see the ptosis here the first image here the ptosis is also there in the right eye right so this is paralytic squint so here is a patient with the third cranial nerve paralysis here they are saying that it shows ptosis and when you have lifted the lid you can see divergent squint so divergent is what exostos exotropia in this case right so in types of squint we have seen heterotropia and in heterotropia you have concomitant and incompetent and in, in incompetent you have paralytic in which third nerve we have discussed so these people will have double vision right they'll have double vision they will have uh, disorientation vertigo all because of this double vision right so what are we discussing we are discussing acquired ptosis so we saw in neurogenic you have to blame the nerves if it is neurogenic so third nerve we finished blaming now let us look at horner syndrome this is ocular sympathetic paresis we have already seen horner syndrome also right we have ha we have a separate video on that where we saw it is ocular sympathetic paresis where you have uh, the it is characterized by this mild ptosis because but here there is paralysis of the muller muller's muscle remember it is muller's muscle <clears throat> horner's can be congenital also okay so but anyways here we are discussing under acquired ptosis this horner's syndrome mild ptosis this is because of ocular sympathetic paresis here what will be the triad mild ptosis 
meiosis even the pupil size is reduced meiosis and reduced ipsilateral sweating sweating on the same side is reduced it may look like they have enophthalmos because even the lower lid can be raised so horners we have looked at now let us go back where were we acquired tosis we have finished third nerve palsy horners then let us look at this one ophthalmoplegic migraine and multiple sclerosis what do they talk about these on this the textbook is not giving much but these can cause uh, ptosis multiple sclerosis can cause ptosis this much you remember okay multiple sclerosis can cause ptosis ophthalmoplegic migraine okay sclerosis means what multiple sclerosis means what it is more like an immune uh, attack right autoimmune is it so the nerves the protective protective covering of the nerves are eaten away okay so that is what is multiple sclerosis so obviously the nerves will get affected now in acquired ptosis we finished neurogenic now let's go to myogenic ptosis so myogenic means what is affected muscle itself is affected so here which muscle they want to blame lps muscle okay so it occurs due to acquired disorders obviously of what acquired disorders of the muscle itself here the of the lps muscle or the myoneural junction that is the a neuromuscular junction is it here they are calling it as myoneural junction okay so it either the muscle is affected or the nerve in the muscle junction are affected <clears throat> so it can be seen in people with myasthenia gravis dystrophic myotonia ocular myopathy oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy following the trauma to the muscle itself some trauma punch this muscle muscle thyrotoxicosis so this is excess thyroid hormone or something right and lambert eaten myasthenia syndrome we know this one right lambert eaten this is also an autoimmune disorder lambert eaten this is neuromuscular junction just like myasthenia gravis only this is something like that muscle weakness of the limbs so remember to blame all these uh, myogenic uh, conditions in myogenic ptosis blame the muscle muscle got hit muscle thyrotoxicosis lambert eaten syndrome myasthenia gravis dystrophic myotonia ocular myopathy muscular dystrophy blame all these things and blame the neuromuscular junction everything that becomes acquired myogenic ptosis after that we are going to aponeurotic ptosis here <clears throat> defects of the levator aponeurosis so here they are blaming the aponeurosis of the muscle the muscle itself is fine but the aponeurosis of the muscle is not fine okay so there's some problem with the aponeurosis of this levator palpebrae superiorus muscle and in this aponeurotic ptosis they like to blame the age so they are saying it is senile ptosis and what you see here post operative ptosis after cataract retinal detachment all those surgeries after surgeries they will have this post operative ptosis so guys what are we blaming now currently for the ptosis we are blaming uh, acquired conditions in that we saw neurogenic myogenic now we are looking at aponeurotic blame the aponeurosis muscle is perfectly fine how did the aponeurosis get injured um, senile because of age it is anyways becoming weak or post operative after some eye surgery or now we are coming to the third point here in aponeurotic so here they are blaming so just look at this condition here there are so many folds or wrinkles kind of thing on the eyelid right so that is this um, blepharochalasis this is what it is blepharochalasis so there can be weakness associated with blepharochalasis guys did you get it ptosis due to upper neurotic weakness associated associated with blepharochalasis okay and then traumatic dehiscence or disinsertion of the aponeurosis aponeurosis trauma or disinsertion okay blame the aponeurosis blame the nerve blame the muscle over now lastly what they want to blame the fourth point mechanical ptosis okay this is easy to understand so what is happening in mechanical ptosis there might be a chalazion or a, a tumor somewhere growing on the lid so that will be mechanically pulling the eyelid down as simple as that gravity so that will cause ptosis cicatricial ptosis because of scar chalazia tumor lid edema lid is heavy so all this will bring the lid down okay so you can see this in people with uh, ocular tenfigoid trachoma trachoma people actually these uh, trachoma people have these follicles right and they also have papillary hyperplasia so these follicles and all like these uh, what are they sagograms so look at the similarity in trachoma 
if you remember we have seen they look like this the follicles right yeah. so that is why the lid is heavy so probably there is ptosis so it's mechanical ptosis follicles trachoma so coming back here to acquire ptosis mechanical ptosis also done so now we have to go to clinical evaluation clinical evaluation what and all you will do you will take the history you will do examination you have to uh, compare uh, both the sides and all that okay then you have to check whether it is a uh, mild moderate or severe condition you have to measure you know measure all this then you have to measure again the degree there is lot in clinical evaluation assess the levator function special investigation tensilon test phenylephrine test photographic record of the patient should be maintained for comparison then after that we have to go to treatment so treatment there are so many types of treatment so we'll meet in the next video on clinical evaluation of ptosis clinical evaluation of ptosis will be done in the next video bye bye